We ready to rock and roll, Doug? I can, I can say that because we're not on the air today. Because, <laughs> because uh, Mediacom has abandoned us again. For those of you who know, who understand, for those of you who understand uh, computer stuff, we have uh, four, our, our bit rate is 461 download, which is good, that's what we're paying for, and it's .48 going up, which is what we need to get out with our signal. So we are not uh, live streaming today, so uh, because of that, so just feel free to say and do whatever you want, because... <laughs> Because it's, uh, you know, no one's going to see but, it, but everybody who's in this building, so. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Hello, Trinity. Thank you for being here. We are glad that you're here. Just have one announcement for us today. Um, Debbie is hosting a, a fun afternoon, a game afternoon. You may have seen Bingo. There's no money involved, I'm sorry. So if you were coming thinking you were going to win a car or something, it's not that kind of bingo. It's just fun bingo. So, I, Excellent. All right. So um, that's 4.30 to 6 uh, right here at Trinity. So take it away, band. Worship the King, all glorious of 
Let's take a moment to pray together and prepare ourselves for the rest of our time together. Let us pray. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways of your spirit, that your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God of new life, give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God of life, give safe haven to those who are seeking healing, liberation, or peace. We pray especially for our partnership with an Afghan family here in the Quad Cities as they continue to work and plan for their future. We pray for the people of Ukraine as they continue to endure the ravages of war. We pray for the people in East Africa and the horn of the continent as they endure the worst drought in 40 years when so many of them are in danger of starvation. Create new places where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. And we ask now, Lord, that you hear the prayers of these people as they offer them to you with their voices or with their hearts. God of life. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized pre people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. And into your mercy, O oh God, we commend these prayers. And we ask that you renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Debbie?
Okay. All right. Looks like it's just you and me, Ellen. You don't want to come up here, Dan? <laughs> Why, thank you. Okay. So, today, Owen was up upstairs with me for Sunday school. Can you tell Dan what we named? Do you remember? Well, good conversation. Okay. <laughs> We made an instrument today. We made something that's kind of like a cross between a rain stick and a maraca. <laughs> it was just basically a water bottle and beads. I'm sure parents love me. <laughs> but I was thinking actually of Dan because Dan, I got to hear him yesterday um, playing the steel pan drums, right? Because he's in the Creative Arts Academy. And I was watching how they make those. And back in the day, like in the 1930s, um, there were some people that lived in Trinidad and they didn't have instruments. So they took anything they could find that was made out of metal, including trash cans, and turned them into these really fabulous drums. And we now have steel bands here, um, and it was making me think about how, with God, we can do amazing things when we give him our creativity, right? And one of the things we were talking about were different ways, last week and this week, that we can worship God. And can you think of one? Dan. It's a way we can show God that we care about him and love him. Praying. Praying's a great way. What are some other ways? Do you remember from our video today, Owen? Giving people things. Giving people things. You're right. Um, today, a matter of fact, Owen made some really fabulous cards. He's really artistic. And we were talking about a good way to show other people the love of Christ is to give them to someone else. And that's a way to show God that we care about him and love him because he called us to love other people, right? So some people are singers. We heard some singers today. Uh, some people, you know, even in this church, it's amazing. Like all the flowers that you see outside, those have to be watered or they'll die, right? There's lots of different ways that we can show God that we love him and care about him, and especially loving each other and showing each other how to take care of each other, right? Make sense? <laughs> okay, so we're going to say a little prayer. Are we ready? You're going to repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for everything you've done for us. Help us to show that love to others. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You didn't even know. You inspired me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the gospel today is from John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. This is the gospel of our Lord. So most of you know I had a cataract fixed last year, and as a result, it was in this eye. This eye started doing all the work, and this eye got tired. So I got glasses again. That's where these come from. And I wanted to be cool, so I got exactly the same glasses that Ryan, our guitar player, got. <laughs> we discovered this morning. <laughs> so now I feel cool. <laughs> I had a music teacher in elementary school who was also the choir uh, director, the musician and organist at my church when I was growing up. She was fantastic, full of life, loved music, and that love of music sort of transmitted to me um, both uh, church music and just all kinds of music. She was great. We, we, we loved her at our church, loved her at school, and then one day she had a heart attack and died. Just like that. My ninth grade biology teacher was the same way. I'm not a science guy, but he made it interesting. He made you want to learn. He was also our track coach and was great. And he uh, got us all the way to the state finals one year. And I mean, he was a fantastic guy and everyone loved him. And one day he had a heart attack and died. <laughs> and I had a teacher at seminary who uh, was German. He, he had come from Germany. Um, a excellent theologian, excellent teacher. He um, just was super interesting. You know? and, and he went back to Germany one summer. Um, and he didn't have a heart attack and die. He was crossing the street and got hit by a car and died. <laughs> Great way to start a sermon, eh? <laughs> death, death, and more death. I remember them because they inspired me in different aspects of my life. I remember them because of their joy because of their energy, because of who we are. And to this day, especially my childhood music teacher, I mourn their loss because it came far too soon and far too quickly. And probably all of you have had somebody in your life who, who created the same kind of excitement, who, who gave you something, some, some knowledge or some inspiration or some kind of guidance, whatever it might be. And in fact, that person may also have disappeared from your life, sometimes even quickly or tragically. Think about that person. Think about what they gave you. The hardest part of all of it, at least for me, in those three stories that I just told you, is that I will not have the chance to say thank you. I will not have even two minutes to say, you impacted my life in a positive and powerful way over time. And if you ever thought in your life that you didn't have an impact, know that at least for one person, you did. And that's the trouble with life on this plane of existence, in, in this earthly life, is that once we're gone, we're gone. And what we cling to is memory. What we hold on to is maybe a, a picture of them in our, um, our minds. Maybe we can hear their voice. Maybe we can 
think about them in some way that brings up those wonderful lessons that we received. But Jesus, see, Jesus is smart. And the disciples were panicked. <laughs> because you see, Jesus already left them once, right? Tragically, suddenly, unexpectedly. He'd already disappeared. He went to the cross and he died. <laughs> and they thought, well, that's it. <laughs> that, now what? This guy who had given us so much, so much joy, so much energy, so much direction, guidance, everything a, a mentor would do, and now he's gone. And then two days later, they got something that we don't get. They got a second chance. They got a second chance to say, Jesus, Thank you. Because he came out of that tomb alive. And now he tells them, I'm leaving again, and this time for good. Oh! Think about the person in your life. They came back. You got to say for that two minutes, thank you, all the things you did for me, all the impact, all the inspiration. And then they said, well, I've got to go. In some ways, that would be even a worse death than the first one, a worse separation. But Jesus is smart. And he says to them, look, I am going, and you should be happy. I'm going to the Father. I'm going to God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to where I came from and where I belong. And we are happy for our departed ones. In the case of the three people I shared with you, you know, strong believers, they knew where they were going when the time came. They knew it. So that wasn't the worry. So we should celebrate for them. Even though their lives ended abruptly and, and too soon, we should celebrate. But that leaves us behind to wonder and to grieve. And Jesus says to the disciples, don't grieve. Because I give you an advocate. I give you the Holy Spirit. I give you literally a part of myself that's going to stay with you forever. That's going to stay with you every minute of the day. Every day of the week. Now in English, when we talk about an advocate, we often think about three things. The first is that an advocate is somebody who speaks for you. Right? We think about somebody who uh, uh, talks on your behalf. Sometimes we call attorneys advocates. Right? We oftentimes think about advocates as somebody who helps you, uh, like if you have a, a parent, for instance, in a nursing home, an advocate will, will be there to help you uh, navigate that whole process, and if something's going wrong, they'll speak on your behalf. A second way that we understand an advocate who is somebody who stands next to you and says, hey, <laughs> I'm not going to do it for you, but I'll help you. Right? Oftentimes we think about teachers that way. Right? Look, I'm not going to do the test for you, but I'll prepare you. Okay? I'll do everything I can to help you. Pastors often, if we're doing our jobs well, fill that role. We say, look, I can't do your faith for you. I can't do this process on your behalf, but I'm going to stand right here with you and, and help you. And another way that we think about advocates is somebody who speaks on your behalf when you're not there. Boy, is that guy a jerk. No, he's not. He's just having a bad day. <laughs> we advocate on behalf of others when they can't speak for themselves. And this is what Jesus gives us in the Holy Spirit, all three of those 
that in the highs and lows of our lives and the highs and lows of our faith journey with God, in the highs and lows of everything that we experience, we know that somebody's there with us. Either kind of giving us the elbow and saying, you can do it. (laughs) Or saying, "Uh, he or she, they're not so bad. They're having a bad day. (laughs) Forgive. Show grace. And that advocate also inspires us to be advocates on behalf of one another. To speak out when things need to be said. (laughs) To comfort when things need to be comforted. To give wisdom when wisdom is in short supply. (laughs) So we are given, and the disciples were given an advocate so they could be advocates. So they knew that when the times got rough, Jesus was there in the form of the Spirit. And that we could share that message with other people. And be the Spirit so that people could see it. Because, of course, part of their fear, part of their worry was, Jesus, we can see you. We can, we can touch you. We can hug you. You're real. You're right here. Now you're talking about this mist. You're talking about this, like we used to say, ghost, the Holy Ghost. Right? What, what are we supposed to do? Trust. Trust that when Jesus says something, he means it. (laughs) He's not kidding. He's not making a false promise. Trust that that Holy Spirit is literally right now in this room. (laughs) Do you believe it? I hope so. (laughs) Because he promised to be. And the Spirit is what animates us. And it's not just an advocate, but fills us with that joy that my has filled me with, inspires us like those people's lives touched mine and like so many others have touched yours. So consider your role as an advocate and know that just as God in the Spirit never leaves us that we can also be there for one another whenever needed. Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen.
Is that new? Is that new? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, thank you. You'd think you were inspired by the Spirit to do that. <laughs> there's a reason, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why we have communion every week here. But one of the reasons, and one of the reasons why our Lutheran understanding of what happens in this meal is that we say that Jesus is really present, really with a capital R, actually, really, not kidding, present. But it also reminds us that Jesus in his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit is present every time we gather. Not just watching from the balcony or a, a distance or off somewhere, but really present, participating with us. And if you ever have the experience when you receive this meal of like something bigger is happening, <laughs> that's the Spirit. Don't doubt it. Don't question it. That's the Spirit. And so in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this. For the remembrance of me. Now let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Thank you all for joining us today, for taking some time out of your day to, to worship and have fellowship together here at Trinity. Um, we'll have our final song and be on our way. Like 50 years ago, Gail had a, had a surgery and um, she's been recovering. Well, it was a little less than 50 years ago. <laughs> but she hasn't been with the team in a long time. And this, this is a great team. This was a team before I came here over five years ago. And Gail is hiding in the back. But she is back. And we're really great to have her here. <laughs> how, how long has it been? Before March 10th. So um, it's great to have you back in worship again and be part of the team. So let's sing together. Through you the blind will see 
Now may God, who's brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Grow in God, care in Christ, serve in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>